I'm going to pause here for just a second and say that when I first started use, using uh, Rust and Wasm, the most popular thing was called standard web. And you'd use a cargo web tool to interact with everything and it would compile to ASM.js and all this other stuff. And use that, I can't say it, whatever. And to compile your stuff into various things. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and uh, that seems to have lost out to what's called Wasm bind gen. And so that's the most popular thing in the community that I see right now. And basically it does sort of thing that standard web was doing. Standard web was trying to make the web more rusty in its interface and Wasm bind gen just kind of like, I'll just make it so you can talk to each other. And Uh, what I'd like to do is just show you a demo of, of WebAssembly Studio as an online thing that if I can find, there it is. I'm gonna refresh because I like to see that. All right, so in this right here, you can do a whole bunch of like different stuff. This empty WAP project is what I use to kind of test all the code that I put in the slides to make sure I wasn't lying to you because I try not to lie. And, but you can do a bunch of other cool stuff, right? And so like, if you wanted to see an empty Rust project, you can come in here and see that we have our main.rs, which in this case is just spitting out an extra C. We have our thing that's calling it and our main HTML, right? So all we gotta do is build and run and it thinks about it for a really long time. Way longer than it did before. That's always comforting. Here we go. Yay. So you notice this output is then generated. So this is what's generated from uh, just a simple excuse me, uh, Rust thing that you saw, right? So this extern C, add one, blah, generates this Wasm code. Okay, cool. Um, you can see that it declares a memory that it uses, 17. So hold on just a second. So what is the format that we're looking at here, even though this is called dot Wasm and it's saying that it will under the hood compile this to actual Wasm format, which I'm, which I understand that's an actual like binary format rather than yeah, a yeah, yeah. readable well, format. Wasm, yeah. And most of the time, like in browser tools that help you, you know, edit and control your Wasm stuff, it's going to show it to you in in the WAT file style. It's not going to show you the binary usually, because most of the time that's not what you really care about. You want to see what it's trying to do. And it's much easier to read this. So yeah. you go from Rust to the text version of the machine code for the virtual machine. This is the uh, assembler. This is the assembly language for the virtual machine. Yeah. And that goes to the byte code, which the is binary. the binary file and the byte code cannot be reverse compiled to this because it'd be missing the names that the names are being generated from the rust code. Right. It could not directly do it. Come back to this. You would be missing these most likely or it'd be auto generated. It's probably actually what it did in this case, or it would change these to use indexes instead when you reverse compiled it. So, You know, but yeah, this is the, the human version. If this dot wasm, if we were to look at it directly, is, is just binary stuff. And I don't particularly care to know more about that format. If you'd like to look into it, let me know and tell me how cool it is. But um, anyway, so yeah, this is what it generates, which I thought was pretty cool. It's pretty small, no big deal. Stuff, don't mangle it. And then in this case, we're getting a thing, getting the bytes from it and then we say hey instantiate it and then call the exports add one to 41 and put that into this thing and if there's any errors put it 
and we get 42. So that's the out and back version. So this is a very simple thing. If you wanted to just kind of mess around with this like very simple Rust thing, you could do that. And honestly, I don't even know how, like this has the build stuff in it for you if you care. I don't know how to do a new one. So I usually just reload it. <laughs> but what I wanted to show is a hello world in Rust. And this is where we get into the was and bind gen stuff. So if we look at lib, now we got a lot more going on. Um, we're marking this thing as wild and bind gen. This is like generate some stuff for me. Okay. Uh, we got some greet thing that we're exposing uh, that we'll basically call hello with the name that's passed to it. And if we go ahead and just, I'm just going to build it real quick. Well, it might as well run it. Okay. It says, hello world. Right. So it generated all this stuff for us over here. And Wasm Gen will generate a JavaScript file with all of this goodies in here and potentially more, um, depending on how things are going. It'll like, if you're doing a lot of string stuff, you can see how it has like pass string to Wasm, right? So it has things that it does to manipulate it and does that all for you, which is really nice. And then, oh, here's my exports that I can now use and et cetera, et cetera. And then it provides this init function that we can call that will just initialize everything for us. Oh, that's your nice, you know, the program stuff. And it also generates a little bit bigger of a file, like a lot, lot bigger. Whoa. Uh, it just has some stuff in it. Um, <laughs> call so, that just a call alert? Yeah. And now you're seeing, look, here's our malloc, right? Um, here's our format, right? Um, you know, dmal, you know, out okay, of memory. Okay, so it's basically the, the runtime and the, exactly. the stuff for actually handling the mechanics. Exactly. And what I understand is that exactly. most of the stuff in Wasm that gets generated from Rust right now, um, the formatting machinery from standard library. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to show is that you can kind of see based on the names here that like there's, uh, you know, the format right. There's also the panic stuff in here that, you know, like what should happen with the panic. And so there are some tricks that some people try and do to remove some of this, you know, like where it just aborts on a panic and stuff like I don't remember how exactly. There's some, you can look them up because they kind of change as they go, but here's some more formatting stuff. <clears throat> yeah, you can see that. I'm trying to get to the bottom real fast here. Mem copy stuff. Right, so and then, then there's a table, I believe that means there's 10 or something. No, oh, it's a different pen. Anyway. <clears throat> Again, our memory's there, and then here we're populating, we're populating the table right here with our starting at one. Put these things in there. You can see the display bump, blah blah blah. Right, and then also starting, starting at our linear memory at ten six ten twenty four. We're just putting this in there, and you can see our format string right there of hello, right? So that's where it's getting that information out of is inside of our linear memory. And then we're putting more, I don't even know what this is, someone who's smart knowing what this is, but uh, putting, you know, at that at 1060 or 1664 and this one at 1856, just putting these bytes there so that these other functions for, you know, formatting and other things like that can then use them. So, Kind of cool. Generates a whole lot more stuff in there, though, right? There's a lot of that. <laughs> and ground strength. All this stuff, right? <clears throat> so uh, I mostly point this out as just a way that you can see like how much this gets generated for you and stuff you just don't really have to worry about. And it gets, the more you, bit, like, this is just a simple, you know, there's an external thing and I'm 
exporting something that calls it, right? When you have something that's like the full on framework and doing all this, you know, interacting with WebSys and JSSys and all this other stuff, it generates a lot bigger files full of stuff for you that just it makes it so much easier that you don't have to even care or know about what WebAssembly is really doing behind the scenes. You can just load it, and it works great. And, and most of the time, it, it, it works occasionally. You do have fun times trying to debug why something is broken, because error messages are not very fun. Um, but uh, there are some things that I was going to show you guys that can kind of help with that. Let me see if there's any. I started by reading this book, Programming WebAssembly with Rust, and I really like it. The first chapter or so, I can't remember, uh, basically just go over WASM in general, and you write everything in WASM, or at least you say WAT, and then you compile it using the WAT to WASM uh, <laughs> tool to, and then run it in your browser. And, and it's really fun. You create a little checkers game. And then you do the same checkers game in Rust and you see how different it is, how much bigger the file is and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, in Wasm Bind Gen, you tend to use WebSys and JSSys to do those types of things like interacting with HTML elements or doing more JavaScript APIs. And there's a whole bunch of feature flags on these so that you only use exactly what you're trying, what you need, which is kind of Rust philosophy. So it's really cool to kind of go through those and then you add the flags that you need. And uh, that obviously makes things bigger, but um, you can all from Rust just do JavaScripty things. And this was and bind gen thing will just compile it down and take care of it for you. It's, it's really cool. Um, 